In this video, we will learn how to draw a free body diagram and to compute reaction forces of a rigid body shown in the graph over here. A structure shown in the graph is supported by a roller at A, so A is a roller support, and by a pin at B. B is a pin support, B is also frictionless pin support. Given force F, acting at the point C, so this is the point C, determine the reaction forces at A and B. So our goal is to compute the reaction forces at the roller at the pin, given the force F acting at the point C, whose angle with respect to the horizontal plane is 30 degrees. The distances from A to B and from B to the plane over here are given and the distance from the horizontal plane to the point C are given. So they are 2, 1 and 1. This graph shows a simplified representation of the structure. So the roller A is symbolically represented by an object that looks like this and the pin is symbolically represented by a symbol that looks like this. We assume that the weight of the structure is much smaller than the external forces acting on the system. To solve this problem, we first need to draw a free body diagram. So let us introduce a coordinate system. This is the x-axis and this is the y-axis. Here is our free body diagram. This is the structure consisting of a horizontal and vertical beam that are welded here. And let's look at the reaction force at the roller ray. The reaction force is perpendicular to the supporting plane. So the reaction force at the point A will have the following action line. And we are going to denote this reaction force by R A Y since it acts in the y direction. How about the reaction forces at the pin B? So, generally speaking, we don't know the angle of the action line of the reaction force at the point B. That's why we decompose the reaction force at the point B we decompose this force into two components, into the x component and into the y component. So this will be R, B, Y, and this force will be R, B, X, since it acts in the negative x direction. Then we are going to simplify the force F, we are going to represent this force F by two for forces, we are going to decompose this force into components. This will be Fx component and this will be Fy component. The sum of these two forces should give the force F. And this angle is 30 degrees. Now, this is our free body diagram. The free body diagram is constructed by replacing the action of supports by the corresponding reaction forces and by placing an external load which in our case it's e is equal to the force F. And let us not forget to denote the distances. So the distance here from A to B is 2, the distance from B to the edge is 1 and the distance from the edge to the point C is 1. We want to determine the reaction forces, that is, we want to determine the forces 
R A Y R B X and R B Y given the external force F. So how are we going to solve this problem? Well, since the system is in static equilibrium, the reaction forces together with the external load have to satisfy three static equations, three fundamental equations. So the first equation is that the sum of the forces in the x direction should be equal to zero. So let us see the forces acting in the x direction. So what do we have? Rbx is acting in the negative x direction, so we write minus Rbx. How about the force Fx? Well, the force Fx is also acting in the negative x direction, so we write on minus Fx, and this should be equal to zero. Now, the force Fx is the projection of the force F, and it's equal to, so basically Fx is equal to F cosinus 30 degrees. Uh, we should remember the formula for the cosinus of 30 degrees. The formula uh, states that cosinus of 30 degrees is equal square root of 3 divided by 2. So from the first equation we obtain that Rbx is equal to minus Fx, that is Rbx is equal to minus f square root of 3 divided by 2. So here is our rbx force. The minus sign tells us that the direction of the force rbx is opposite to the direction shown in the graph. So rbx acts in this way. And it's, equals, and it's equal to f square root of 3 divided by 2. The second equation tells us that the sum of the forces in the y direction should be equal to 0. So, let us see the forces acting in the y direction. We have positive r a y because the R A Y acts in the direction Y plus R B Y and minus F Y is equal to zero. Now, the force F Y is the projection of the force F onto the Y axis and this projection is equal to F sinus 30 degrees. And we know that sinus of 30 degrees is 0 0.5. So we have F over 2. Fy is equal to F over 2. From this equation, we obtain that Ray plus Rby is equal to Fy that is equal to F over 2. So this is our second equation. However, we cannot solve this equation for R A Y and R B Y since we have only a single equation with two unknowns. So we need to introduce a third equation. The third equation is the moment of equation. It's the moment equation. The moment equation tells us that the sum of the moments of all the forces acting on the structure around a specific point that we can choose is equal to zero. So let us choose the point. In this case we are going to choose the point B since the action lines of the forces RBY and RBX are passing through the point B and consequently the moment of these two for the moments of these two forces will be equal to zero. So we are going to choose the point B. So let us compute the moments. 
First, we focus on the force R A Y. We want to find the moment of this force with respect to the point B. The moment of a force is equal to force intensity times the shortest distance between the action line of the force and the point. In, this is the action line of the force R A Y and the shortest distance between this action line and the point B is equal to 2. It is this distance. So we write R A Y times 2. Now we have to properly compute the sign. So let us see what is the sign. Now, if the force is revolving in the counterclockwise direction, direction with respect to the point, then the sign of the moment is plus. If the force is revolving in the clockwise direction around the point, then the moment is negative. In this case, the force is revolving in the clockwise direction, so the sign is negative. Okay. How about the forces RBY and RBX? Well, the moments of these forces are zero since the action lines of these forces are passing through the point B. Good. How about the force F? Well, we have decomposed the force F into two components, into the fx components and into the fy components. Consequently, we will have to compute the moments for both of these forces. So, what is the moment of the force fx with respect to the point B? It is equal to the distance, it's equal to the intensity of the force fx times the shortest distance between the point B and the action line. In this case, this distance is the distance over here that you can see and this distance is equal to 1. So the moment is fx times 1. How about the sign? The force fx revolves in the counterclockwise direction so the sign is positive. Similarly, the moment of the force fy is the intensity of the force times the shortest distance between the action line of the force Fy and the point B, and this is equal to 1. And the force Fy revolves in a mathematically negative direction, that is, it revolves clockwise, so the sign is negative. Now, from this equation, we, con we can compute R A Y force. So R A Y force is equal 1 over 2 multiplying F X minus F Y. So if we substitute the values for F X given here and for F Y given here, we obtain 1 half multiplying f square root of 3 over 2 minus 1 half times f and this can be simplified by taking out f and 1 and 1 half so we have f over 4 multiplying what do we have in the bracket square root of 3 minus 1 Finally, we can compute the force RBY. From this equation, we can express the RBY as follows. RBY is equal to F over 2 minus RAY. Now, by substituting RAY from this equation into this equation, we obtain RBY is equal to F over 2 minus F over 4 multiplying square root of 3 minus 1. This can be simplified as follows. f over 2 multiplying 1 minus f, no, not f anymore, we don't have f anymore. We have 1 over 2 multiplying square root of 3 minus 
1. Now, this can be further simplified. f over 2, 1 minus square root of 3 divided by 2 plus 1 half. So, at the end, we will have f over 2 multiplying 3 over 2 minus square root of 3 over 2 or we will have at the end f over 4 multiplying 3 minus square root of 3. So this is our force RBY and we have computed all three forces. So here is RBX, here is RBY, and here is RAY.